The next rotating flow turbine that I'm working on, I want it to work on steam, so I'm going to make this one on a metal. Now I acquired two big lids from two big stock pots, two big cooking pots, and I'm going to take these lids and I'm going to sandwich them together to make use of the space between them as a working area. Now like the last turbine, I'm going to orient it so the axis is vertical, but on this one, I'm going to have the supply pressure coming through the top. And in between these two uh, lids, I'm going to put a separator to separate it into two chambers, an upper chamber and a lower chamber. And that upper chamber will be for that nozzle arm to come down and spray steam, air or steam, all the way around that upper chamber. And the lower chamber, below the separator, I'm going to have channels to channel the exhaust back towards the center and then out the bottom. Here are the halves of the turbine. This one over here, this is the top half. And these are both stock pot covers. 120 quart stock pot covers. <laughs> and they just get bolted right together. And this is the bottom half, and on the bottom half I'm putting a separator in with some uh, shelving brackets that will leave a space for exiting exhaust to go out. So this will be bolted to this half, the bottom half. And then the air or steam will find its way on this outer edge and work its way back to the center and then out the bottom. And I'll stiffen this up too when I get these bolted together. Now I have to get the label off of here. These covers are a little bit flimsy, but I'll see how strong it is when I get them all bolted together. Got them, I'll have a bolt about or a screw about every inch and a half. I'm gonna peel this off. So I know it's gonna loosen up later. I actually got these covers for free because they were bent up. So I'm not gonna have much money into this build. Mostly using what I had. Something different to get that off. It's not going to come off. Now I'll get these stuck together. I'm using some ultra copper high temperature RTV silicone gasket maker. Looks like I had it a while, but it's still soft. So I'll get this. On the whole edge. Got a nice flat surface here to meet up with, so I don't think it should be screwed together. I'll have it screwed together every inch and a half. Should be able to get it together, I think. Find my marks. There. Had it together once before to get the holes drilled, but never had it sealed up yet.
Oh, well, I got them all together and <laughs> a lot of screws. Originally, I was going to use a, a bicycle wheel rim and put two pieces of uh, aluminum plate on each side. But these pans stuck together, left an inch and a quarter space in there, and that's more actually more than I, what I need. So I just slapped these two together, and screwed them together. It's a little bit flimsy, but I didn't want to spend a lot of money on anything yet. You know, I'm still researching and developing, and I had a. A bearing already one I had from quite a while ago and this is just a piece of half inch electrical conduit EMT conduit I had to put a little piece of uh, aluminum tape in there to build it up a little bit so I could fit a three-quarter inch bearing on there but I got a real bearing on this one so we'll see what happens now and this top part it's just, this is just a, a mud ring for electrical box is what they call it. Screw that onto the center and then the top part where the air is going to come in is about the only piece I had to make. This piece right here. I just cut that out with a hole saw and I put a, a bushing in there, a brass bushing. There's not, you know, a ball bearing in there. This is just a Bronze, I mean bronze bushing. I don't think it's brass. A bronze bushing. And then, and the way I got this, I'll be able to fish this in here and take it in and out as I need if I want to change something. But I need two hands to get that in there, so I'll do that next. That's a little out of balance, I can see that.
a lot there. I forgot there were screws hanging down. These things sure are tough on my fingers. They got that off the center there, that uh, plate. Wobbling. Or this hub underneath here. Must not have a quite centered under there. Seems to be working all right, except for. Without a balance, I think that bottom plate or hub, hub that I have there is out of center, soft center. I think the top one though is pretty good. I don't touch it, I keep knocking holes in my finger. I think I hit it on. This screw right here. I might have to do something different, a different type of hub here. Maybe something like I did the top one. Okay, it's not quite centered. The bearing seems to be working all right. It seems to turn it easy enough. Doesn't seem to be leaking on top there that I noticed. This leaking is just this hose. Yeah. Wall bone. Centered. That took a good chunk out of my finger. It doesn't hurt though, really. Must be just the skin took off. That's always seem to have something going on. Okay, now. Injury. <laughs> All right, I think I'm gonna sign off on this video and go lick my wounds. I probably have to make some kind of adjustment. Maybe a pipe flange underneath there. This is just something I had. It's a it's a plate for outlet box. I think for. Uh, to hang a exterior light on, I think. Spotlight. I don't know if that's... Maybe it's not manufactured just right. I thought I had it measured for be right in the center. But evidently it's not. Let me put it on the whole throttle here. That's 
little throttle right there. And it's just spinning down, so it does spin pretty easy. I can just crack this open a little bit. I do feel the air exiting out down there. Just got it barely cracked open right now. I don't feel any air leaking around up there. Yeah. Seems to be more precise. 